Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the first week of 2022, the weekend being January the 7th, 2022. Interesting week this week. So why everyone was surprised that, that the Fed actually, the minutes out of the meeting actually mirrored uh, what uh, the Chairman Jay Powell said uh, last week, that they were going, they wanted them to address inflation and so they go, okay, in the minutes that said, oh, they're really going to address inflation. And so you had this, uh, had this uh, big sell-off in the NASDAQ uh, on growth. Uh, uh, not unexpected, I, I suppose, but even with the big down move, <laughs> we're still looking at levels around 14855 it, it is where it seems to be holding. Uh, if it goes down below that, 14 and 754 would be the next stop. Uh, if it can't hold there, then we've got some uh, rearranging, big serious rearranging going on in, uh, in tech uh, and, and growth as these rates change. So let's talk about the rates change, okay, what the, what the yield curve is really going to be doing. They're going to they're gonna stop the Fed. When I say they, uh, the, the Fed is going to, for the time being, uh, uh, leave uh, short term as it is, but they're they're stopping the the buying on the long a long term of the curve. Okay, so uh, imagine this. Imagine this curve that goes like this. We like to see it go like this in a normal sense. Okay, so on the short term you've got like three months, and on the long term you've got like thirty years. Okay, in the middle of that you got five and ten year. So the five and the ten, the five year has been hanging out really below one. Now suddenly it's in the one fifty range, which is where the ten year has been for a year roughly. Uh, now that you the the ten year is flirting with one eighty uh, today. Uh, it, it was it's around one seventy nine uh, right now. We've got about uh, three hours, two and a half hours left in the trading day trading session, but uh, it, it it's back down around one seventy eight. But it was flirting. With a high 179, so if this is going to continue, now it can turn around on a dime. But those are pretty big moves. I mean, you've seen uh, across the yield curve, the spikes have been 30% movements upward on the short term, uh, finally getting back above zero uh, on the short, and, and then on, on the uh, the rest of the curve, movements of greater than 20% upwards. Uh, 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 a movement up in yields means the prices of those bonds are falling. Okay. So what you're going to have, what you're going to see here, is the um, it's a very very cold uh, wintry day here in Atlanta area today in the metro Atlanta region. So uh, I'm, I'm, I've got a little uh, little halls uh, mentholate in there to keep my uh, whistle wet as we go through this. Uh, it, it, what what you're going to see is on the short end, the Feds are going to start throughout this year to 2022, they're going to start increasing the cost of overnight borrowing. That's the short end of that stick, okay? So they're going to start raising those rates. What's that going to do? That's going to pull money out of the system. This is how they're, they're, they're addressing the inflation. It's going to pull money out of the system, liquidity out of the system that has been propping up the markets for several years now, okay? Especially because we just had dealt with crisis after crisis. So that's going to pull, start removing some of that liquidity, making what? Credit more expensive, money more expensive. So speculation in uh, high price earnings, multiple growth tech stocks, more risky. All right, so that's riskier, more expensive, and so there, those rates are going to start going up. I'm just trying to show you some some cause and effect there. All right, uh, the Fed's not saying this is why we're doing it. This is the Feds are saying we're going to start making short-term overnight loans more expensive. And so that on, on, on the other end of the, of the table, they're going to stop buying long bonds on the other end of the curve, and they're going to start selling those. So see, they've been buying those, and so this, they, 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 they've, been, they've been, you know, artificially keeping rates low on the short end and supplying trillions of dollars worth of overnight loans uh, over the last several years. And they've also been buying, they've added about $9 trillion worth of assets to their balance sheet. So now they're going to start selling those up. So to me, so what, what you got going on here is they're pulling money out, raising rates on those overnights on the short term, and then selling those on-term assets on the long-term side of that curve, all right? When you've got selling pressures, then your prices are falling. What happens when the prices fall with bonds? The yields rise. So that's how you're seeing this yield curve steepening 
back into what uh, uh, what is uh, <laughs> hasn't been normal for since 2008 really, but what in the old days we used to think of a, of a normal looking curve. And so um, you're getting uh, 30 years back above two uh, percent. Like I said, the 10, not to belabor this, about one at 170, high 170s right here. So that's what's going on. What is that doing to stocks? Well, risky stocks, stock companies that need money is to grow and, and R&D, if it's just tech, well, those prices are falling right now because you've got a repositioning going on. So, newsflash, all right? Blind squirrel finds nuts. Go into, as, we, as we're waiting for the earnings reports to come in, uh, you know, you, it's your standard stuff. Energy in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a reopening economy, a booming economy. Energy, all right, industrials, financials at a rising rate. So there you go. Blind squirrel finds not. That's where you want to be starting position in the near term. Now, I don't want to make this long and drawn out, but uh, how do you position yourself if you don't like all of this volatility? Because what's happening, really, uh, I told you that NASDAQ it doesn't have a trend. The S&P doesn't have a trend right now. The S&P and, and, and the, uh, the Russell 1000 are looking much more robust uh, right now for moves to the upside soon as those earnings start coming in, gangbusters in the next couple of weeks, in my view, uh, start going up. Now, uh, the NASDAQ and the tech, um, it, it could do the same thing. Could, it, it, everything's just drifting right now, waiting. I, uh, I think and that's for earnings is what I'm thinking that it's for, uh, because none of this has been a surprise. So... What you really see here is maybe not so much of these tried and true techs. Now, Microsoft, uh, you know, that, that's finding a bottom right now, perhaps. But uh, really, if you start looking at the overall uh, rest of the markets for a change here, uh, you see this drifting sideways. And so what, what we've had over the last six weeks, take the NASDAQ because it's been the extreme example, up three week, uh, up, uh, down 3%, up 2% down 2%, up 3%. You've got these big volatile moves weekly, okay? And it's really just going sideways for the last six weeks. Uh, it's, just, it's just extreme when you do that. If you don't enjoy that kind of movement for your money, uh, retirement money, which you have no choice but to be at risk in, then consider giving us a shot in two different arenas, all right? First, if you're still employed, uh, you need to check out our monthly subscription plan. We'll advise you monthly uh, in a tailored way how to, how to invest in your employer-sponsored plan, your 401k plan, 403b, whatever, uh, the tax-deferred plan, and it'll let you invest with confidence, and that way you'll sleep more peacefully as you're, uh, as, as you're going through this a period of extreme volatility, or might not mean not extreme, but a higher volatility uh, as we shake out and get the pandemic behind us, okay? The good news is, is that is that Omicron is, is looking like it's going to end this pandemic here in just a couple of more weeks, all right, uh, for all intents and purposes, and, and we're just going to start moving like, uh, like the big kids that we are in this country, okay? My view, my hope. <clears throat> now, the other option that we have, so you've got this monthly subscription. Hey, it's twenty-five bucks a month. Come on, uh, that's that's uh, that, that's quite that's quite reasonable to protect thousands of dollars that you have, your life savings, and your employer-sponsored plan, and help earn you more money, thousands more. The other way to do it is to come to our classes that we're going to start opening, or if you've already been to those classes, uh, take a look again at your allocations. And let's build a plan for you for this other money that you don't have in service. And if you, even if you are still working, if you're not retired yet, on this other money that's still in service, um, you can um, use our, our 401k confidence plan to do that, a monthly subscription. But there are your other older money that's perhaps uh, from, from previous employers or IRAs and that type of thing, repositioning into tax uh, efficient tax optimized models but also investing those in more risk efficient ways. A couple of the alternatives we have, one, we've got some buffered uh, investments available to you. Now these are going to be pegged to indexes for sure, but uh, uh, you've got some protection on the downside. Let's say, you know, 10% protection would be a, a lot, would take out the worry of all of this oscillation that we see in the NASDAQ the last six weeks, all right? 
because we're only seeing three or four percent there. That's a lot in a week, but that's what we're seeing. So if you've got a 10 percent buffer, you can stomach that. You're not worried about it because your principles say you haven't lost anything. And towards the end of the day, uh, you, you have to give up a little bit. There's no free lunch. You have to little, give up a little bit of upside for the longer term, but you don't have to worry in the meantime about that downside. So you could go 10% if you're really uh, if you're more afraid than that. You could get a 20% buffer. It's just what you're giving up on the gain on the other side of the coin. So we're looking for four to six. You could probably easily get four to six percent out of that. I should easily just flows out of my mouth like I, because it's just a, a phrase. But let me let me take easily out of it. It's there's nothing easy about these markets. These markets are going to be uh, take a lot of work to do something in. But what I'm saying is is that we should be able to, without a lot of mental stress, build, construct models that should get the four to six, provide you the 10 to 20 percent of protection on the downside and, and, and not sacrifice that on the upside. Okay, may have to go down to three to five. We'll see. That's part of the, uh, 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 of the, of the fun, uh, of, the, of the plan building process. On the other side, if you don't even like to have any of that money, and some people, you know, you have to have a 60-40, so you're at risk money. Maybe you take a little bit of the buffer uh, downside risk out, downside risk out with the downside buffers. Uh, for the other 40% of your money, maybe you just don't need to be taking any risk at all. Just use a 0% downside uh, uh, protection and still retain the upside protection that you need. There's always a cost with these things. On those types of indexed products, what you're giving up is liquidity for a time period, okay? So the whole question is, how much time are we looking at here? How much risk you're comfortable with? And uh, how are these markets going to continue to adapt and evolve as the Fed gets us out of this? So this is how, again, I'm going to wrap it up now. This is how they're taking money out of the system. This is how they're going to address inflation. They're selling the assets that they purchased on the long end of the curve, all right? That's going to pull those interest rates up. They're going to stop injecting and buying assets on the short end of the curve, okay? And those rates, overnight rates, will normalize. And that way, the liquidity in the system over the next couple of years here is going to slowly wean off uh, the Fed's uh, teat, as it were and start moving back towards some sort of a, uh, uh, an economy pre-financial crisis 2008. Tried to do this in 2015, wasn't well received. Boom, uh, all of a sudden we got those huge tax breaks in, in 2017 and then we got a pandemic. Don't want to start another conversation right now, but that's, uh, that's the, the, the macro view on things. All right, I have a lot more to say about a lot of this and I'll try to put it into our classes, come to our classes, or uh, we'll, we'll try to condense this down into micro versions as we go forward. Sorry for this one going a little bit longer this week. Hey, first week of the year, a lot of things going on, and then there's Omicron everywhere. So watch out. You might get you some of that if you're not careful, okay? Everybody stay safe, stay happy. I'll see you next week.